the first section is, is we, what do we call it? How do we make it work? How, do, how to make this work? As I was preparing my talk, um, I, I pondered this a little bit, and I realized I had a lot of questions. And then I said, oh, right, Davos-style discussion. We're going to get a lot of good answers from you. So let's get to it. Um, a lot of people run around pulling their hair out about AI and the massive job disruption and, and other problems that it could cause society. Uh, the latest hysteria in the media, killer cars, the autonomous cars are all going to run us over. Um, Elon Musk has described AI as the most likely cause of World War III. OK, that's interesting. Is our destiny written? Are we indelibly headed towards Skynet? We're seeing weaponization of AI already. right? So let me ask a pop quiz to the room. How many fake news impressions were delivered in the 2016 US presidential election, just through Facebook? 100 million? Any other guesses? Two billion. Yeah, that's a lot closer. It was 1 billion impressions to over 125 million voters. Wow. All right. Well, that's AI run amok. Um, there's an AI running for the mayor of Tokyo, talking about bringing fairness and change. Can we even design an AI that could run a city? When we talk about AI, we, we seem to have lost sight a little bit of this question of, is there a way to train in Asimov's three laws of, of robotics? He, Isaac Asimov came up with an idea many years ago about how to ensure that you know, we didn't have Skynet and that, and that you know, we'd have controls around these things. Um, but you know, we're designing machine learning systems that are designing machine learning systems that are designing machine learning systems. We don't even know what's going on inside those black boxes. So how do we embed this concept of human ethics and human society? So I have this conversation often with the governments that I, I work with. And, and you know, there's a question arising about regulating AI. The EU is contemplating three different regulatory bodies to govern the use of AI. Is this something we should do? Is this something we can do? Is there even a capability of actually regulating AI? All right, what about blockchain? I have to say P.T. Barnum would be proud. I've been through a number of hype cycles, but this one takes the cake. And I speak as someone who participates in all this stuff, right? I, Sandy and I teach the Oxford blockchain class, and we do books and everything, and, and we encourage, we're involved in blockchain startups. And still, we look there and we say, my god. But I'm excited because of the democratization of the financing of innovation that blockchain has enabled. There's almost $7 billion of funding for, for you know, uh, blockchain-related businesses through, through ICOs last year. This year, we're on track to do even more. This is exciting because it's breaking the monopoly that venture capital has on the financing of innovation. I was at an MIT event with a nameless venture capitalist who was very prominent in the US industry. Uh, and he said, there are only 3,000 CEOs in the world that I can possibly back. Got a real problem. There's too few deals. I said to him, in a global population of 7.5 billion, really? There's only 3,000 CEOs? He said, yeah, well, I draw a circle 20 miles around my office, and those are the guys I back. Guys. So I find exciting that, that blockchain, among other things, one of the unintended consequences of this new technology is the democratization of innovation. But what's it actually good for? My God, how many times I get this question? And for those of you in the, who, who here gets this question of what's it actually good for? My, yeah, most of us, right? So I'm intrigued in particular about what AI and blockchain can do together. What can they uniquely do together? Why do we need a distributed ledger married to an AI? I think there's some interesting problems in there that we can solve. Colleagues in this room have come up with an idea around how to combine AI and blockchain, not just to cure cancer, actually to help revolutionize all drug discovery. Cut the cost of drug development by 50% and cut the time to bring life-saving drugs to market by 50%. OK, some reflection. I am become death the destroyer of worlds. Right? When Oppenheimer saw the results of the Trinity test, 
or the atom bomb, he had an ethical awakening. And he said, what is this technology that I have unleashed on the world? This, of course, is what Mark Zuckerberg said about his users. And he actually put it in writing. So I offer this compare and contrast of two different views on technological innovation and encourage you not to call your users dumb fucks, but instead to think about how we use this technology and how we can use it to make a better human society. I'm not worried about the singularity throwing us all out of work and we're all going to be on the street and maybe universal basic income will keep us from eating each other. It's technology that we have invented, and we get to decide how we use it. So in this room today, I encourage you to think about how are we going to use these disruptive technologies to build a better society. Thank you.